Ladder tray and miscellaneous deration. That's right. Miscellaneous. Didn't think you were going to see that word in a presentation today, did you? So what we're going to look at is how we do ladder tray deration and a few of the outlying sort of miscellaneous types of conductor sizing that we may find ourselves having to look up. So let's start with ladder tray. The ladder tray rules that we're going to be looking at will deal with both single conductor and multi-conductor cables. And so really will be necessary for individuals to really uh, go through the rules with a fine tooth comb so that you're aware of exactly what type of cable they're referring to. So let's take a look then at the rules. Here's my cable tray and I've got a number of multi-conductor and a single conductor and a few more multi-conductor. Now, what are the rules that we're going to use? Well, 4004 sub rule 22. And this one is specifically if I have spacing or diameter spacing that is over 100% diameter of the largest cable on the tray. A of several 22 indicates that single conductor cables need to follow this directive, which would give you tables one and three. And several B or item B of several 22 is for multi-conductor cable. And it tells you to use table two and four. And of course, taking into account table 5C for the number of conductors that would be inside that particular cable. Now, as we start to adjust the spacing, the rules continue. So now I'm to 25 to 100% spacing of the diameter of the largest cable, several 23. And really all that several 23 says to do is they say, go back and use whatever you did in several 22, but then in addition, we want you to use table 5D. And 5D is a ladder tray uh, duration table that provides you information about layers of cables that might be on the cable tray and a duration factor for the number of cables present. If we go all the way down to less than 25% spacing, you'll notice that there is no distinguishing within the rule if they're single or multi-conductor cables. Effectively at this point, they don't care because there are too many conductors in contact. We treat them all as if it's a multi-conductor cable. In addition, table 5C is applied, but notice you're applying table 5C not based on the number of conductors which might be present in this cable, but rather the total number of conductors in the cable tray. And this can have a huge effect on the overall installation. So let's take a look at an example. And this example is going to be cable tray. And we've got three single conductor cables and one multi-conductor cable. Now, all of this is going to terminate to 75 degree termination temperatures. And the uh, three individual cables, uh, single, single conductor cables are tech, which means they're copper, and they're 600 kc mil. So that's these three here. This one, which is my larger cable, is one three conductor tech, and that is 350 kc mil conductors inside that tech. Now, what I've made a note of here is that all the cables are spaced at a minimum 100%, 110% diameter of the largest cable present. And so in this particular situation, the largest cable present in the ladder tray is actually this multi-conductor. So whatever the diameter of this is, 110%, uh, and I know it's not to scale, but you know, bear with me. They're saying that the distance between each of these cables is at least 110% of this, the largest cable. So how are we gonna determine how many amps each one of these cables can supply? Well, we're first gonna go to 4004, several 22. And for the single conductor, 600 kc mil copper conductors, I go to table one, and there is no, no deration that needs to apply 690 amps each, that means the maximum load or allowable ampacity is a total of 690 amps for each one of my single conductors. What about the multi-conductor? Well, the multi-conductor is three 350 kc mil conductors. So as the rule states in item B, I go to table two and I should apply table 5C, but remember table 5C is only gonna give me a duration numeric value uh, if I have more than three conductors. Now there's only three conductors in the cable. And that means the duration factor is effectively one. And so I'm simply using the 75 degree lookup value 
out of table two in the same way that I looked up the 75 degree value in table one. So for this application, there's really not a whole lot that needs to take place. It's almost as if I'm just doing a single conductor and a multi-conductor calculation at the same time. Okay, well, what happens if we were to shift some of these cables around? Not all of them, some of them. And this is what happens in ladder tray installations. Some items get moved. So what's happened here is these conductors, the single conductor cables, are now been squished together and they are now spaced at 75% of the largest cable diameter. So 75% of this cable diameter is what they are spaced at. So it's smaller. Notice the multi-conductor cable is still spaced at a gargantuan 110% largest cable diameter. So this one is still good. So let's take a look at what steps we need to go through in order to determine the allowable impacity or maximum load of these conductors. First, I'm going to start with my multi-conductor cable, which we know already because it's at 110% diameter, 4004 sub rule 22 becomes active, and table 5C still just a duration factor of 1, and so that means 310 amps is what that cable can carry. Now, what about the single conductors? Well, the single conductors are going to have to use sub rule 23, and 600 kc mil, I go to table 1, it's good for 690. And now I need to go to table 5D, and we're looking at the number of cables present. The number of cables present is four. With four cables, I have a 0 0.84 duration. That means once I multiply those two values, the maximum load or allowable impacity of my single conductor cables has shrunk to 579.6 amps. Well, let's take it all the way to the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario, whoops, I didn't cover that. There we go. Would be a obscene, tiny little space, 5% space, or we could say zero space between them, like maybe it is in contact. Well, in this situation, what we'll need to do is go to several 24 for both of those types of cables. First, I'm going to go to my 350 KC mill. Table two, look at my impacity value, right? Which was, we had the 310, I think it was. And then here, table 5C, 0 0.84. Now notice in several 24, it is very specific. It says here that we are going to have a total number of conductors being counted. So in total, there are six conductors in the tray, which is why I got the 0.84. That means 310 times 0.84 gives me 260.4 amps. Well, what about the single conductors? Well, the single conductors are still dealt with under several 24. And since everything is now 5% space, they are all going to use the same duration factor, which is 0 0.84. I took 690 amps from table 1, my table 5C value, and 690 times 0.84 is 579.6 amps. So you can see that definitely it makes a huge difference depending on how much space you have between your individual cables. Make sure you follow those three sub rules of 4-004. Now that brings us to the miscellaneous. Miscellaneous, I have a couple items listed here. One of them is flexible cord, DLO cable, and neutral supported cable. Well, let's start with flexible cord. How on earth do I go about determining the allowable ampacity or simply sizing flexible cord for a load. Flexible cord is often known as cab tire, and it has different type ratings for light duty, hard duty, extra hard duty, and they often will have letters that indicate SJO, SJOW, things like that. They're black overall, and all of the conductors inside the cable are insulated. Now, how do we find the impacities? Well, the conductor impacity when we're dealing with flexible cord is found in table 12. And table 12 gives you all these different types of flexible cord. And then there are vertical columns that indicate the amount of current that each one can carry with their different AUG sizes. Now, how do you adjust for the number of conductors that are in the cable? For instance, let's say we have a flexible cord and it has like five insulated conductors in them and four of them are current carrying. 
well, how do you determine what the allowable impacity is of that cable? Well, we go to 4-012. And what they have done is provided all of the duration values for conductors in contact within that rule as a percentage. So you just uh, move the decimal place over and that's your duration factor. 80% is equal to 0 0.8. Now, what about if I have conductors that are in a high ambient temperature or different termination temperatures? Because you'll notice from table 12, there's no indication here that this is for 60 degree terminations or 75 or 90. And so we can go to two additional tables to determine that information. First, termination temperature and insulation duration. This is essentially a very short calculation for 60, 75, or 90 degrees centigrade. Uh, it's instead of them providing those values in the table, they just give you a little duration to apply. What if it's a very warm environment? Then the temperature for the ambient environment can be provided with a duration factor, table 12b. And finally, what if this cable is rolled on a drum? Well, if it's rolled on a drum, there's going to be layer upon layer, just like an extension cord when you roll it up. And things like cranes will utilize this. And so we need to account for that added heat by the wrapping of the cable on the drum. And that would be table 12D. Now, the way that the duration factors will function is exactly the same as what we have seen with every other type of duration. If you want to determine the size of the cable, and you've got the load, then you need to take your duration factors and the load and divide. If, however, you're given the cable already and you want to know what the maximum load is, you need to take the cable impacity and multiply by the duration factors given. Now, that would be for flexible cord. And flexible cord is a number of individual conductors inside one cable. Now, on the other side, is something called diesel locomotive cable. And diesel locomotive cable differs in that, well, it, it looks almost the same, but diesel locomotive cable is only ever a single conductor. And it's highly stranded to provide immense flexibility. So it's only one conductor. That's all it is. So we have a table that we can look up impacity values for DLO cable, and that's table 12E. And I'll say, it's important to read the notes on table 12E because this is where we're gonna get the details on how we are going to work with other duration factor tables, as well as what, is, what are these impacity values based on, 60, 75, or 90. So it indicates that for the additional duration factor tables, table 12B, 12C, and table 5D as in dog will be utilized. All right, well, that's diesel locomotive cable and flexible cord. Let's finish off with neutral supported. Neutral supported cable or NSC is unique because it is both free air and conductors in contact. So that's a bit odd. So conductor ampacity is determined by table 36A and 36B. And within there, you'll notice that it's copper and aluminum. If we divide it down further, you'll notice that there's two different types of insulation available, NS75 and NS90. And finally, there is the different types of neutral supported cable that are even present. You have duplex, triplex, and quadruplex. Duplex would be something like this, where you have one insulated conductor and one non, and the voltage of load that you typically would run with this would be a 120 volt, perhaps something like that. Triplex, you have two insulated conductors, so maybe a 240 volt load, and quadruplex, 120, 208, three phase, and we could work with it in this way. So there's a lot of different ways that we can utilize duplex, triplex, and quadruplex, and uh, it really can depend if it's a feeder or if it's a main service. And that's because of the need or lack of need of a bonding conductor. So why don't we have any sort of TTR types of deration with overhead neutral supported cable? Well, that's because the compression or split bolt that we have for termination is always going to be uh, compression, uh, split bolts, a 90 degree rated. 
And that means that the weakest link in the opacity chain is always going to be the insulation on the conductor. So when you look up your cable opacity in table 36A or B, whatever the insulation is on the conductor is the weakest link. And that is what they have provided the table opacity numbers for. <laughs>